Jacko here from Scorecast Nets. I'm joined today, or I've come to Hot Pod Yoga in Nottingham, and this is Sarah. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of work together, um, trying to put in place uh, some of the comparisons we've seen between yoga and calisthenics. Um, those that follow our framework, you know that we, uh, our framework is based on two things, movement and strength. And in, if we haven't got the capability to um, create the right shape, so if I'm going to enhance on this overhead mobility, it doesn't matter if, whether I'm strong enough if I can't do that. And in yoga, we've seen that I've been to hot pod myself and experienced it. It's great for improving your shoulder mobility, well, all sorts of mobility, but particularly we're going to focus on shoulders to help us get into better positions. And I think Sarah and the guys at Hot Pod Yoga are really great. Uh, to give us some different ideas around how to work on on that mobility and then we're going to look at from a from the scorecard sense point of view how we can work on um, some strength aspects to help those of you whether you're calisthenics or whether you're yoga um, into yoga trying to improve your um, headstands handstands or any types of inversions So this first video in the series is going to be focusing on mobility and warm-ups and for the mobility and movement aspects uh, Sarah is going to take us through first a series of um, exercises you can perform you don't need anything you can perform at home and the first one is a dolphin correct dolphin. yes absolutely okay so um, this guy is going to work a little bit around the shoulders um, it's going to work through your core strength and it's also going to work um, on the hamstrings and the back of the legs I think really with um, the stuff that you guys want to achieve, it's probably best for us to focus today, particularly um, around the shoulder mobility um, and the upper back. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to give us a demo first and then I'll give me a demo first and then I'll give it a demo. Okay, so you're going to start this guy pretty much on your hands and knees. You're going to come down onto your forearms and elbows are going to be pretty well underneath the shoulders. This one I'm going to roll onto my little finger side here of the hands and bring the hands together and clasp them. It can be quite easy here to just sort of sink into the shoulders, so I want you to really push the floor away. Maybe you can see my little triceps as they are, kind of engaging. Nice. Push the floor away. <laughs> big arms, big paychecks. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're pushing the floor away, so you're really actively engaged. So as we said, this is really about starting to think about what's happening in the shoulders and the upper part of the uh, back. So um, we're going to keep the knees bent today. So I'm going to tuck my toes under, I'm going to let my head drop, and you can see my hips are starting to go back a little bit towards my heels. And I'm starting to really engage around my arms and pushing the floor away through the sides of my arms. And from here, it's almost like someone just loops me up from the back of my waistline. You might find at this point that you're feeling like you're coming forward. That could be like a restriction around the shoulder area. But I want you to just maybe take a step in here. For me, this is making it a little more intense. I'm going to put a little bend in my knees. I'm pushing the floor away through my elbows down to my wrists, and I'm just pushing chest to thighs. I can feel that. Yeah, and you can see that overhead position. I know that when I'm going to have a go at this in a second, my lats aren't going to thank me for it. And also that as, as Sarah pushes the chest forward down, back down there, you're seeing that extension through T-spine, which is going to be key. That upper back, that T-spine, being able to extend and open up as well as the shoulders. Those two things working together. I'm looking, I'm semi, as much as I'm looking forward to getting into this, I'm sort of dreading it as well. But I'm looking forward to know that's going to be a great one for, for working on the hands. Okay, awesome. It takes out any of the worry about your wrist and everything because you're just supporting on your sure, elbows. Sure. Cool, All right, I'm Let's up. Uh, I'll go the same way, I'll go the same way. Good. So, elbows down. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, you'll notice that my tricep is bigger than Sarah's, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> 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 so literally, like, I'm just going to look him up from the back of his waistband here. He doesn't need to worry about straightening the legs out because I want him to really focusing on, you can see already he's starting to come back here. So I'm not going to push him out of place here, but imagine that my hand is here, just pushing the chest towards the thighs, and if you need to take it, let's just feel like, yeah. like, 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 good, now take it back. Wow. You feel it Yeah. You felt me getting into that space. So, yeah, pretty good. I'm liking it. How's it feeling? Are you smiling inside? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> active, active, active. Push, push, push. Yeah, good. Oh. You just give us a uh, something that, <laughs> particularly like my background is um, 
you used to play professional rugby, so the way you, the way you get through any problems is you just try harder and you just grit your teeth and you push through. I know like in yoga, breathing's a big part. Huge part. Huge I was huge probably part. holding my breath there. You are, I'm right. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's a really important thing, actually. Um, we're not trying to push our body into submission here. It's trying to work with the body. Um, and just by watching what your breath's doing, the minute that you're working a little out of your comfort zone, you'll start to <gasps> hold your breath and become out of puff. Yeah. So just keep watching that breath. If it's regular, you're in a good space. The minute that you're trying to push, 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 and trying to create this perfect like Insta picture, uh, yeah, uh -huh. um, you're probably not working in a way that's harmonious and try, yeah. try and really trying to get yeah. what you're achieving. So try and stay relaxed rather than bullying it. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's yeah. something for me yeah, to work yeah. on. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Okay, so the next exercise, what's the next one called? It's called Upward Bow Pose. Okay, I was going to call it a skydiver. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks similar. Go for it. But it's going to work on opening up the front of the chest and Although you're not going to be going to an overhead position for this, if, we, if we're tight in the front of the chest, and particularly in the pecs and pec minor, yeah. it pulls on those shoulder blades and it affects your overhead position. So being able to open those up with, we're going to, the arms are going to be behind the back in this one. Um, just because you're not taking your arm overhead, don't think it's not going to have an effect, a positive effect on your overhead shoulder mobility for your handstands. Absolutely. So. Okay, so, shall I show? Yeah, give us, a, okay. so give us a perfect demo, then I'll show you what the... Uh, <laughs> Um, by lying down on your belly here. Um, the pose itself is going to end up with me having bent knees, scooping around and picking up my ankles. I'm already worried. <laughs> I'm going to give you a <laughs> I'm going to give you different variations. <laughs> um, I'm going to roll my shoulders up and back, and I'm going to start by picking, kicking my feet up towards the sky and back. And you can see that as I kick back, I'm starting to roll back and kick and bring both the thighs and pretty much most of the torso off the floor. Okay. It's impressive. Are, a lot of back strengthening going on there as well. Um, if you are really tight, if you just want a lot of time developing on the um, front of the chest, the pecs, that's what I'm saying, yeah. um, then you might find that at this point you're kind of floundering going holy moly, where are those legs gone? You might find that you need to take the legs out wide in order to grab them. You can hold on to your trouser leg, don't worry about this. Okay. It might be that your posture starts kind of somewhere like this and kind of it's just oh whoa okay if you can get a hold of any part of the leg if the knees are wide apart as soon as you start if that's strong for you as soon as you start to zip those thighs back together you're going to find your chest is leaving 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 because of that mobility through the shoulders so that again might be your posture might not be to even come off the floor at all but to just try and get hold of those legs draw back and try and get the thighs zip back together that might be enough for you Okay. Yeah, great. A uh, nice thing about that as well, you're getting, getting a, a stretch oh, on the massive, hip flexors. Massive hip flexor stretch and massive strengthening for the muscles around yeah. the spine. Yeah, and, just think, of, spine, and just think about the effect of if your hip flexors are tight and we're going to go into our handstands, don't think that, that isn't gonna have, tightness around the hip isn't going to have an effect on your shoulder. Like the, the tightness through the hip is going to affect your lats. Um, because of where it attaches on the pelvis, but also when you go in into our handstands later and we're trying to get some nice straight tight positions, we're going to actually want to get the pelvis sort of tucked, the tailbone's almost tucked underneath and if we're tight we're going to find that difficult. So this is going to be good for when we go later on into um, some of the alignment work in, in, in the handstand. Perfect. Let me move you. I'm worried about this one. <laughs> you didn't say much to bring trousers. <laughs> oh, look at that. He's got it. So exactly what I was saying earlier, just as Jacko reached round. Yeah, that's round much open, easier. Legs open, knees quite wide apart. And as he zips those sides together, you're going to see already oh. the spine come up because that is his range of movement. So again, that, that might be as far as he wants to go. Yeah. If he wants to take it further, start kicking these feet to the back behind you. Oh, and now try and get more fire off the floor. Kick the feet up, 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 up. Okay, I can see you shaking a little bit. Yeah. I think you're working a little too deep for <laughs> the purpose of getting into the deep stretch. Are trying too hard. Are you uh, breathing? Yeah, there you, you go. <laughs> okay. Try and take the head up so the head's not heavy. Good. And now just give me one last little as deep as you can go. And relax. Oh. Okay, so we've had the spine pretty much in a strong um, extension here. So if you want to go back into flexion now, yeah. just move carefully, particularly on this lower back. Take yeah. back hips to heels, child's pose, and just breathe it out. Yeah. It can be quite intense going from those extremes into the spine. So always just give yourself a little moment just to readjust and listen to your instinct always. It will tell you if you need to move the body in a certain way. Yeah, it's nice when you, you, you if we're prepping for over positions, you're actually 
then again going into a, an overhead position. Yeah. And I think breathing in breathing that child's pose position, I can, when I feel like I expand my chest, my, my, my whole like, um, like rib cage and, and torso, that I get a nice stretch through the lat. I can feel that through my lats, it's nice. Sure. Great. Okay, so then the last bit that we're gonna work on um, is the bit that's actually the foundation for our handstands and our hand balancing, because our hand is gonna be on the floor and that's the wrists. So we need to be able to create decent wrist extension, which is that way, to be able to get a nice balance and alignment. The tighter you are the wrists, with that forearm isn't gonna be able to be vertical off the floor when you're in your, in your handstands, and that's gonna compromise everything else above it in the chain. So it's really important. Yep. Foundation's up. Yep. Okay. So, so let's just start on our hands and knees. Um, and starting again, fingers quite spread wide. This is how we'd normally kind of roll with our hand position, quite comfortable for most of us. Yeah. So let's just start by doing a little outward facing here. So if you turn your fingers towards me on the left hand and then out to your right. And actually, if we go to our right first, you can actually just get a little bit of movement here. Just take this one really easy. Um, okay. It can feel pretty intense here as we kind of go over and that could be, if you feel like a, an obstruction here, that's pretty well bone on bone. <laughs> um, so all so the just, and stretching in the world ain't going to yeah, change that. Be, just be gentle. <laughs> be careful, yeah? It's not a competition. Is yet. synchronized yoga a thing? Is that, I feel like we're, I feel it is are we now. crazy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's take this into um, a slightly different frame. So I'm going to now rotate the hands back so my fingertips are towards my knees. So quite strong already coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, my, if the heel of my hand is coming down to the floor, I can feel that right the way up here. Yeah. Um, and then again, we just see how we feel. So if you feel this is a little intense, you could bring your knees a little closer in and lean a little forward. Um, and again, it might be that the, the stretch here for you is literally getting those heel of the hands down. Um, if you're good with that, you can take the knees back to where they are and you can actually start to just tuck the toes under so you've got a little more stability and just start to take the hips close to the heels behind you and you'll see if I do this side on that we're just getting a very little movement here in yeah. terms of the angle of wrists. But it's important that you're keeping that, as you mentioned, sure. keeping that base though because when we go into our handstands those fingers spread for a nice base of support we're going to want to grip in with the fingertips but we're going to want the base of that palm on the ground as well so that um, we've got as much bigger, bigger surface area as possible and as much contact with the ground as possible so um, that's just a good point to make on that, yeah. Yeah, and we have the same when we're doing our downward dog, uh, yeah. stuff like that. There's a real tendency to roll out onto the side. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're, we're not just using this or just hanging out on the wrist with floppy hands. Yes. So really important for us too. Yeah, to, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And we're going to take that into a reverse, is it reverse tabletop? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Cool. So um, I'm just going to sit here and your, your, feet place, your feet will fall pretty well exactly where they need to be, just how your, how your legs, how your proportions are. Um, so I'm just going to sit here, um, bent knees, feet down, um, hands come behind you, they're a little probably uh, wider than hip, uh, depends really how your shoulders roll, um, and then fingertips pointing in uh, towards the body. So feet hip width apart as well, um, and I'm just going to create a reverse table here. So I'm just taking the hips up as high as I can, you're going to feel the glutes kicking in a little here, try and make sure that the hamstrings are working as well. I can actually switch the glutes off here if I want to focus on the hamstrings, but actually I'm thinking more about the shoulders. Yeah. So, um, if I let my head go back, I don't feel um, vulnerable around the neck, but I feel like it's making me sink yeah. around the shoulders, yeah? That's, that. And that, yeah, and that, just, just sink that down, sink, sink. Is that the difference between the shoulder position there and that's where they're firing forwards to then pushing up to the top and she's engaging. Yeah. Imagine squeezing a pound coin between the shoulder blades here and now we can see that nice retraction and the shoulder's in a good position. Yeah. Yeah, and that's again, looking great. Um, often we use this just to um, counteract from doing a boat pose or somewhere where we're working uh, strong through the hip flexors. So um, if you can get over all the shoulder stuff going on, it's really lovely at the top of the thighs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think as well, in that, in that pose, um, the, you sh your shoulders are actually working quite hard, so we're not actually gaining range, we're actually building strength within that new range, yeah. which is super important. And, and again, I'm semi scared of doing this one. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 again, just, <laughs> just trying not to swing out on the wrists. If you become sloppy on the fingertips and the hands, yeah. it's starting to impact on the wrists, so it has to be really pushing the floor away through yeah. the arms. And I think even for some of us that have not done an awful lot of this type of stuff, or if you were keen into your weights, um, like I was previously, and you, you like your bicep curls and things, even just having that arm straight and fully extended at the elbow there is a little bit daunting. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll see, sure, how, sure. we'll see how we get on. Sure. 
Um, so where, hands behind. Yeah, I'm with the part, um, how far back sorry, from above? Part, sorry, yeah. And how far? Cl how close um, to I above? Say, at you, that feels about right. Yeah. Okay. But you can shuffle whilst you're up there. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. Oh. Grimacing. That's not a good sign. <laughs> and it's the difference between sitting here and being able to peel those shoulders yeah. Yeah. back, and that really. Yeah. Engage those fingers as well into it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh. So this time it's almost as if that little string is looping up from the front of the waistband up. So trying to get that height there. Can you feel it particularly in glutes or hands? Uh, yeah, my uh, glutes. Yes. Can you get a bit more into the hands? You'll feel the hips go a bit higher, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You're shaking around the shoulders. Yeah. For so me again, any time we see shaking, um, meh, maybe just trying or pushing a little too, too hard much. into your range. Yeah. But I can just feel as I relax a little bit. Yeah. and just stay there, I can then peel them a little bit yeah. further. And I can definitely feel the wrists getting, yeah. getting um, into some decent range in there. But, being, but because you're supporting yourself and your whole body weight, you're actually getting some strength in those positions as well, which is really gonna be useful. There's no point in having good range in our shoulders if we're weak in that position or, or the shoulder isn't stable in that, in that overhead position, which is a vulnerable position for the shoulder because when we go into a handstand, you're gonna have all your body weight resting on your shoulders and your hands. So that is going to be, a, that's a great start. Thank you, Sarah, for us to, and some ideas that we can work on um, to help with our shoulder, wrist mobility and, and flexibility to help us when we're prepping for any of our overhead positions, but particularly for handstands. Okay, so that's like the using Sarah's helpful yoga to help us with our movement um, preparation in terms of increasing our and working our shoulder mobility. And what's nice in those as well is we're getting a little bit of a um, little bit of tissue temperature in, particularly in that um, that reverse tabletop where we're actually working quite hard as well as gaining some good range. Um, just to finish that off with what we would do with the scorecast and its framework in terms of movement preparation and patterning, we want to start to now before we get into going from that creating range straight into where I'm going to go into my handstands. We want to start to warm up some of the shoulder stabilizers that are going to help stabilize that shoulder in this, what, what is quite a vulnerable or difficult position overhead. Um, so that's going to be an important part to just to finish off our, our warm up. And I'm going to give, uh, get Sarah to demonstrate and I'll uh, uh, coach you through some of the, the key points for this. So the things that stabilize the shoulder overhead, we're looking at everything that controls the shoulder blade. So the first one, is going to be our YTW, that's going to look at um, rhomboids in the middle, mid-lower trap, and we're also going to get the rotator cuff. And th those things work together to control and stabilize um, the, the shoulder blade, the scapula, as it's moving and going overhead. And then the second one, we're going to look at the serratus anterior. Um, so, first one, YTW, very important. Before we worry even about the arms, we're just going to get, look, make sure we get the trunk of the torso in the right position. So, um, we ask Sarah to try and pull a rib cage down underneath and get that core engaged. I like to imagine I'm getting ready to take a punch in the stomach. And then the other one is she's going to squeeze um, her glutes like she's trying to um, hold a 50 pound note between her butt cheeks and it's a windy day. <laughs> and you don't want to let that go because you've worked hard for that 50 pound note that seven. Okay, then the rest of the leg is nice and right. So that stays like that. When we go through and move the arms, we don't want to see any movement through this trunk. We want to keep that nice alignment because that alignment is what we're going to want in our handstand when we flip us 90 degrees. So the first part of the YTW is into the Y. We're going to work um, particularly focus on the lower trap. So um, the hands go out in front, thumb pointing up so we get a little bit of external rotation. So you can imagine she's squeezing a pound coin between her shoulder blades and then raises those arms up. Nice little pause there and then goes to T where the arms go out to the side. Really squeezing tight in here, keeping those nice and high. Shoulders aren't being dragged up, hiked up towards the ears. You see that nice separation there. And then the W, which can be also one of the most difficult where we're really going to focus on um, get the rotative going is palms facing down, really getting a nice squeeze between the shoulder blades here and pulling them down. But also it's elbow down, hand up, creates that external rotation, making sure we still don't arch the back. And I've then we press. <laughs> yeah. I've lost my core. That's right. I've lost my core. I'm pushing the floor away. Yeah. So right. one. So something that would happen. So you go back into your Y. So you got the nice. So you get that nice, nice setup. Because when it's difficult to hold ourselves in that W, the back and arch to make us feel like we're getting that retraction. But all we're doing is we're moving our trunk, our torso, our back, rather than actually getting the shoulders into that external rotated position. So if we go, we'll go, we'll go through one more again. So squeeze the pound corners and shoulder blades into a Y, that's nice. And then T, 
good. And then W, because the other thing was I held you for a long time with that W and squeeze them back. Elbow down, hand up. Nice. And then you go back into your Y. T. <laughs> These are hard, right? Yes, and then W. Really <laughs> cool, rest there. Cool, rest. It's fine. So then we'd be looking at like uh, one to two sets of those, 10 to 12 reps, trying to get some, that, like they are hard, you're starting to get link core and glute together, but the shoulders are going to, you're going to start to feel that these guys are getting warmed up around the back of here, which is going to be great preparation for our handstands. The second one is going to be um, a push-up plus. So we're looking at the top part of this push-up or push-up plank position, and we're going to try and peel those shoulder blades and really push them, uh, uh, push them around the rib cage, which is going to start to activate um, and warm up the straightest anterior, which helps keep that um, shoulder blade flat to the rib cage. When we take the arm overhead into this um, handstand position, the shoulder blade has to move around the rib cage and, and, and come around. And if that serratus isn't keeping it flat to the rib cage and pec is tight and pulling him and, and anteriorly tilting him, then as soon as that um, shoulder blade isn't tight to the rib cage, it's not going to be a stable, shoulder doesn't feel stable, brain goes, you're not having that strength, and all of a sudden everything starts to feel a bit harder because the brain's very good at con controlling us and stopping us from getting injured. So if we get them fired up, if the shoulder is stable, then the force can come through. Okay. So you go to your um, so the top of your push-up position, so like a push-up plank position. Again, we get to make sure that, that core and that glute are engaged together and controlling the trunk. And then from there, she's going to try and push those shoulder blades apart and you see that top of the back raise up nice and then we'd sink from there, then sink back down in. Great. You can say you must do these in yoga, you can see that. And they see, I can literally see those shoulder blades peeling apart, lovely, and then pulling back. Nice. Good thing with Sarah is lots of ni nice controlled movement. Um, just give us one more. Nice controlled range, a nice pause at the top there, and then controlling on the way back down, not just falling back down and also not losing that trunk position. Cool, rest there. Be the same thing, we'd be looking at one, two sets of those, 10 to 12 reps to get us warmed up. That should then put us in a great position to be able to, we haven't used any equipment, if you're doing this at home, puts you in a great position where you've increasing your shoulder mobility, you're starting to link some of that shoulder, the stabilizer around the shoulder, also with the core and the glutes to have, start to understand where your body is in different positions, because when we take you upside down into some of your inversions later, then you're gonna have to, you get a bit disorientated. So getting some of that body awareness as we go through here, as well as creating range, getting warm and getting those tissue temperature up, is going to help us when we go into our handstands and that is a uh, for me i'm pleased with uh, how that would be but i'd know that if i've went through that full circuit of exercise or series of exercises that my shoulders will be well prepared for some handstand or inversion training so if you'd like to see some more um, content from us if you click subscribe which is up here um, if you really want to get into your calisthenics uh, but you're just a beginner we've got a free beginner's guide which is down there you can get that from our website for absolutely free and then if you want to look at some other mobility drills you can see that up by Sarah's head over there um, if you're into hot pod yoga um, we've got the description in the link there's a link in the description below for um, link to hot pod yoga Nottingham thanks for watching see you next time